Hey everyone, welcome to another episode in this series, which is all about playing with all kinds of fun stuff. And the, let's say, excuse for creating the series was this selection of papers from Hanne Müller. This is um, a pad that they offer. They're a German-based company that has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. So they should know <laughs> a few things about making paper. And um, I think almost all of their papers or all of their papers and sketchbooks are vegan and made in the EU, like in the European Union. So for me, it's very appealing. I'm based in Austria. If you're new here, hi, my name is Irit. Welcome. I am a self-taught watercolor mixed media artist and I like to play with watercolors and enjoy the magic. So today we're testing two more papers, the number eight, no, the number seven, which is the one you're seeing on screen. And that one is the Leonardo named after the master, of course. And this is a 600 GSM rough uh, paper actually the one that comes in the pad is rough uh, they also offer it in a cold press and hot pressed finish so texture of paper and this is probably you know the 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 big mama of their papers and what can I say? It's as beautiful as you can imagine. Now, the thing that happened is I enjoyed my painting and was so happy with it. <laughs> and it all came together so fast that I can't tell you that, you know, I really heavily like tested and kind of tortured this paper. I'm pretty sure it's amazing. At some point, I'll probably get uh, some more of it. Right now, I I bought some of the Turner and the Cezanne papers, uh, which you uh, hopefully have seen in the previous video. And those are also 100% cotton and beautiful, beautiful papers, but they are just, you know, cheaper because they are uh, 300 GSM. The nice thing about the 600 GSM is that, you know, it's so heavyweight. It doesn't buckle. It just, it can kind of handle whatever you put on it and I think the rough actually the rough surface is beautiful I can't imagine I would get the hot press but maybe one day I'll try the cold pressed and yeah just super super beautiful paper you know it just does all the things that you want from the top quality paper, the way that the color flows on it. And again, I have to kind of apologize and say that I didn't, you know, do these huge wet washes, but you only need to put a little bit of color on this paper to see just how beautiful it is and how the colors flow into, into each other. It's just not really an effect that you get with the... Um, the cellulose paper, not at this kind of level. And I, you know, I've said it before many times, I really enjoy cellulose papers, some more than others. I think my favorite that I've tried till now, but I don't know if it's vegan, is actually the Paul Rubens one. Something about it, the way they made it, the texture really, really appeals to me. And there are other like nice ones that I'm really enjoying, but yeah, cotton paper, this, I, I won't tell you that it's not worth it. It's definitely superior. So I have been on kind of an abstract floral, um, what do you say, kick? No, I've been on <laughs> kick. Where did that come from? I don't know. <laughs> English is not my first language, but I have been painting a lot of that. So I've been kind of obsessing about um, those, just playing with colors and compositions and different things. And this one, I think, is probably one of the first ones I've done in a really, really long time that actually has like a vase. But I was feeling it. I'm using also some pencils. I have been using pencils probably on every piece 
that I'm painting now alongside watercolors. It really, really works for me for many different reasons. And the main one is that I just like the way that it looks, like those sketchy lines. I think it really complements that, um, you know, transparent, flowy nature of watercolors. It's like a, a nice contrast. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. So I'm having some fun with this paper. It's just a joy to paint on. There's nothing to say about it. I can't fault it. I think it's beautiful. And I will definitely be on the hunt if I see it uh, for a good price that, you know, I feel like I can um, get it instead of just the regular 300 GSM, which is also great. I will pick it up because it's really beautiful. That pop of ultramarine. I love a good pop of ultramarine. <laughs> Something about that color, right? I mean, I don't know. I, I was never so... When I started painting with watercolors, I wasn't so in love with it. But in the last, I think, year, I have just really, really uh, grown to really love it. I think it's just that combo of that really um, kind of clean looking, bright, fresh blue with obviously a lot of beautiful granulation. The one I'm using is the Rembrandt one and I have to say I love it. The price is right. They have big tubes. Formula is beautiful. It granulates. The shade is beautiful. I mean most ultramarine blues that I've tried are quite similar but still some have just a bit more pop and yeah I think the Rembrandt is the one that I'm going to stick with. I recently bought a Lucas one and it's lovely, but I don't know. Something about the Rembrandt one is just a little bit prettier. My palette is my summer, dusty, hazy, <laughs> crazy summer palette. Um, since the filming of this video, I have moved around some paints and made some changes. But um, yeah, most of the colors are what you can see in the video about this palette. So I think we are reaching the end of this process. I also want, I think this is a good opportunity to tell you about a new watercolor class that I'm working on. I'm really excited about it. It's quite different, I would say, to all of my previous ones uh, for several reasons. The focus here, okay, I'll tell you, why not? The focus of the class is intuitive painting with watercolors, of course, and a bit mis mixed media. There's definitely lots of pencil work in there as well. But the focus is intuitive painting, and there's a lot of florals, kind of this style, the more abstract style. And what is different about it that is that it really dives deeper into the process and what I'm thinking about as I'm painting. All the videos I'm filming are real time and I talk you through what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And it's... It has been really, really fun to create the class and, you know, dig deeper. So I'm excited about it. Coming soon. I don't know if in June or in July, but yeah, very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. Okay, moving on to sheet number eight. This is, wait, I want a sip of coffee. This paper is called Cornwall. It's not cotton. The one that they have in the pad, they have the 450 GSM cold pressed and then they also have the rough. I didn't like the rough. I really liked the cold pressed and I'll tell you why. This was actually, I think, one of the best discoveries. I didn't doubt that the 100% cotton papers would be lovely. Um, I just kind of wanted to see which one I preferred between the tar the Turner, the Cezanne, and the Leonardo. I, I was happy to see um, kind of the differences. But this paper, uh, I think it has a lot of potential for me personally. 
Uh, first of all, it's whiter, which I kind of like sometimes uh, to have that brighter white paper. A lot of like the other, the traditional 100% cotton papers from Hannah Mule, the Turner, Cezanne and Leonardo, they have that, um, you know, like ivory white kind of color, traditional white, natural white, I think they call it. And this one is whiter and it's 450 GSM, which is a really nice weight to work on also. Um, I don't think it like hardly buckled. The colors flow nicely. It shows granulation nicely, but so it, it's all good. It's not cotton paper, but it's really, really nice. What I particularly enjoyed about this paper is how forgiving it is. So it is very, very easy to lift the paint and get almost back to the white of the paper. Now, I know that if you do, I'm just showing you the texture. It's really lovely. I know that if you do a lot of like glazing, then this kind of paper will work against you. You don't want that. You want, you know, the layers that came before to kind of stay in the paper and not everything be lifted and create a mud. But if you work in similar techniques to me, like I do, and then this is, it can be a really great advantage. And for me, you know, many times I go into heavy with watercolors or I like to work just slowly building the the painting, adding also pencil lines and more brush strokes. And if you're also working in this kind of intuitive painting where the painting tells you what to do next and you don't necessarily have a plan, then the ability when you're working with watercolors to remove color easily to get back to that white is very, very appealing to me, you know, as opposed to having to come in with like a white gouache or something like that and use some opaque paint to cover the previous layer. So I definitely see myself using this type of paper for these kind of abstract paintings uh, because of that quality. And yeah, this was a really pleasant surprise to discover this paper. I haven't really painted on anything similar to this. I've either painted on like these, um, you know, cellulose papers with a nice weight or cotton, but this is, yeah, it just has a really interesting combination of qualities. The white, the forgiving surface, the heavy weight. It just feels like a really great base for mixed media pieces where you use, you know, at least like the base layer is watercolors. As I said, it's not great for glazing because it will lift the layers underneath. But um, yeah, I, I, I do, I am very excited about the possibilities of this paper. And it was also a joy to paint on. I wouldn't come in to this paper with my, you know, super loose, florals that you need to build layers and have the, the the first wash, the second wash, the third wash. I don't see myself using this paper for that. I think it's, you know, just setting yourself up for disappointment. But um, for mixed media, absolutely. So I'm playing here with some pencils and I'm using a combo. These ones, the one I have in my hand is called sand. The color is called sand. It's like, you know, sand color. And it's the charcoal tinted pencils from Derwent. I love these. I have been really, really enjoying them. I think they are different to other pencils, just the way that they feel and the way they kind of scratch the paper. You get more of that sketchy, raw kind of line which I personally love. So if that is something that appeals to you, this is kind of a mess-free way of using charcoal. And if that also appeals to you, then you should definitely try these. Um, I have some charcoal. I have, you know, like that vine charcoal sticks. 
and I have the extra large charcoal blocks from Derwent, all fabulous, um, but all messy. And yeah, I, I just, I'm the kind of person that if I, if my hands get dirty, then I know I'll have the charcoal all over my painting and having the pencils is a really, really lovely um, way of including charcoal in my work. So yeah, just playing around. The brush I'm using is the Jackson's Quill Raven brush. I think this is the smaller one. This is the 0 slash 10 or 10 slash 0, the smallest one. I have to say it's probably my most used one. Uh, I have discovered my love of working with smaller brushes. Uh, I feel it just fits my style more. This kind of goes back to something I've spoken about in the past on, you know, learning, taking advice, and then being able to ignore it when it doesn't work for you. And I do love painting in what I would consider like a loose way, but I have discovered that working with really large brushes is not necessarily the way for me. Um, it just things get too wet and messy too fast. And before I know it, I have like a page full of paint. And yeah, it's a bit, there's a problem with watercolors. It's kind of hard to, you can't just slap some, you know, gesso or white paint on top of it, which you can do with acrylics. So this is very, um, yeah, as I said, this paper really inspired me to pull out all of my <laughs> supplies. This is my set of Inktense blocks. It's such a beautiful product. I really need to, I don't know, maybe pull out some of the blocks like I did with my pencils and just have them on hand as opposed to the big box of all 70 something colors, which I hardly ever pull out and open just because it's, you know, takes some minimal effort. <laughs> But yeah, I also used those. I really, really enjoyed playing with this. Now, I want to show you at some point, what was I doing? Where did I go? Why is this stuck? I wanted to show you how um, you can remove paint from this paper. There I am. I came back, don't worry. So I want to show you how you can remove the paint. It's so easy. And I think it's actually such it for me, it really opens possibilities for working in the mediums that I love, which is, you know, mostly watercolors and then some additions with like pencils and some pens maybe. But just to be able to manipulate the paint and kind of reveal highlights where I want to, um, that to me is that that's great news for me and you can see you can really really get now I was just like <laughs> trying to show you <laughs> that you can really get back to the white of the paper and I actually tried a few days later like a week later when I filmed the kind of conclusion video um, I tried to remove again the paint and it still lifted really easily. So take that under consideration. It can be a disadvantage, but for what I have in in my head planned for this kind of paper, it's great. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon in another video. Bye.